Tyreek Hill, Cheetah, the name introduces themselves. Will he answer and be honest? Yeah. We will see in this sit down. Patrick Mahomes, Tua Tonga Vailoa, if I said that correctly, Andy Reid or Coach McDaniels, would he rather have a Super Bowl Shut or up. a gold medal when it comes to the Olympics? Let's dive in. Yeah. Came from the mud, self-love. I had to get up in my zone. And I ain't have a team, I had to get it on my own. The only ones I love, the ones I hit up on my phone. When nobody at the top, this how I feel when you alone. Had to get up on my self-love. <laughs> When I was sitting down preparing this interview and just prepping, Mm -hmm. I found it a little difficult. I find you interesting, but I don't know if I like know you or if the world really knows you. And the reason why I say that is because you have a cape on. A lot of us athletes have capes on, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and what we give the world, that's all they see. Right. And I just see you always smiling, always happy, always creating, you know what I mean? Always balling. And so I want to take the cape off a little bit. And so my first question for you is like, who's Tyreek? Who's Tyreek Hill? I'm sure a lot of people want to know who Tyreek Hill is. Well, first of all, I'm a son. I'm a Christian. I'm a father, obviously, of six beautiful babies, man. And um, every day is a blessing for me, you know, that, that I get a chance to like wake up and set the standard for my kids, man. So yeah, man, that, that's pretty much who I am, man. Um, People obviously know me as this fast guy, you know, on the field, you know, um, inspiring the youth and stuff like that, man. But I feel like who Tyreek Hill is, you know, who my family know me to be is the family guy, the funny guy, the guy who's always the life of the party, um, always trying to have a good time. And really, man, I'm I'm the Spencer James of my family. I yeah. mean, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that, um, relate to the All-American. So. That's who I am, man. There it is. When I think about, like, when I was thinking about sitting down with you, I was like, all right, what's the theme? And for me, it's success. Mm-hmm. Um, you're at the you're at the mountaintop right now, the pinnacle. Not only just as a wide receiver, because you said that you know you want to eclipse two thousand yards, be the first to do that. You know. You're the best probably, you are the best statistically for sure when it comes to who's the best at the wide receiver position. But you're also one of the faces of the NFL, which is extremely hard to do. Right. At the wide receiver position. There you go. Yes. I gotta agree. While you're at the top though, I'm thinking like, are you happy? And I asked that question because a lot of times what the world see right. is what we give them. Like I said earlier, but you don't know what a athlete or celebrity is going through at home, right? Right. And so you might be just hitting it in stride and, and everything is just clicking, but I, I I do have that question, like, are you happy? Are you good? Man, we all know, you know, um, everybody has something that they're going through, you know, whether it's family related, whether it's, you know, job related or whether it's, you know, health related. But obviously for me, man, um, the biggest thing that makes me happy is, you know, being able to see my beautiful babies each and every day. I finally got to a point in my life where I have a great relationship with all the mothers of my kids. And, you know, um, it took a lot, you know, to get here to this point, man, but I'm very grateful. I'm very, you know, thankful for the for the journey that, you know, our great God has given, you know, both of us to be co-parents, man. And it's been amazing. Um, Obviously, you know, um, I wish I could still have a relationship, you know, w- with my grandparents, you know, they're, they're still alive and healthy, man. But sometimes, man, God, like the way this thing works, man, like he'll, he'll show you who for you and he'll show you who ain't for you, man. So right now it's just me, the kiddos, my mom, um, my sisters, and you know, my two nephews, man. So the journey has been great. Um, and for me, man, as uh, being being a leader on this team, I, I can never show a sign of weakness. That's something that my grandparents, my mom has always taught me, you know, no matter what you're facing in life, you know, you can never show a sign of weakness, man, because if you show that sign of weakness, whether it's in your life or at practice, you know, your teammates are gonna cling on to right. that and they're gonna like follow your lead. So 
I've been able to like battle through it, um, pray about it. And I know it's gonna, you know, make itself right one day with my grandparents. And, you know, um, I know they still love love me, you know, at, like their son. Um, and yeah, man, I, I just, I just got to keep going and just stay focused on what the real goal is, man. And that's just setting the standard for my family and doing something that nobody has ever done, you know, in my hometown or in the surrounding cities, man. And that's the beautiful thing about it. Like, um, this isn't only about me. Like, this is about, you know, the young kids back in my hometown or the young kids all across the world who look up to me, who may be undersized, who may who may not, you know, have the opportunity to go play college ball at the next level. Like they look up to me and, and it's like, I never can stop what I'm doing each and every day. Like that passion, that drive that, you know, God gave me is is great, man. And, you know, I'm, I'm just blessed, you know, to to just receive it from them. Right. So each and every day I'm, I'm going out, I'm going balls to the wall. I'm going hard each and every day, man. Listen, I'm not even going to, you said a lot. You just said a real lot. It's a lot to unfold, man. I'm not going to waste our time talking, asking you a question about like greatness and if you thought you were great. Like someone like you, right? You all like, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm, and, and this is uh, me going out on a limb and and and, and guessing. Uh huh. You always knew you were great. I mean, you never. I, I mean, I won't tell the world that. I mean, I just let people tell me that. You feel me? Because I when you were literally, did you think you were great? Nah, man, like, obviously people would tell me that. It's always been the same mindset. Like, the way that my grandparents and my parents raised me is, man, like, um, be be grateful, be thankful for everything that our God has given you, and, you know, just stay humble. You feel me? Like, people will tell you how great you are. You shouldn't have to tell yourself. You shouldn't have to convince yourself. You feel me? So that's always my mindset. I'm always trying to find ways, you know, to be better than what I am, to better than what I was yesterday and today. So I can never get complacent in the same spot that that, right. that I'm in. You feel me? Because if I'm just walking around here thinking that, oh, I'm this great receiver or this great football player, then I feel like I'll never achieve anything. I'll just be right. stuck in this bubble of just, oh, I'm cool with just being who I am right now. So, and and you know, I I teed us up there because, and I love the humility, um, but I teed us up there because, you know. My question was like, did you ever dream to be a megastar? Like, you lightweight push a megastar. Come on now. You know what, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Because because when you were talking about impact, you're talking about kids. It's not just about me. And I and it just came up. I was like, damn, like, you really touch the people. Got to man. That's what it's all about. Um, it's all about inspiring the next wave of, you know, young talent in the world, man. And I think that you know football is you know, America's sport and, you know, me being able to be just uh, a key piece in influencing, you know, the youth to just be themselves, man, is just awesome. You know, I, I never thought to myself that I'd be a mega star. Like, you know how we grew up, man. We grew up, you know, jumping on a trampoline or just outside playing with our friends, just imagining that playing on Sunday night football in front of the fans and stuff like that. But I never imagined myself like being like actual face of the NFL. So, so. I appreciate you answering that. The two things that came up earlier for me was like, uh, one, you know, you talked about uh, aligning with your your kids' moms. Right. Right. So it's like, how did you get there? That was one. Right. But then where I want to start with is, you know, grandparents. Right. And mm -hmm. I appreciate you being vulnerable and opening up because like that's what we see is cheetahs like doing backflips with cameras, cheetahs seeing a viral video of these kids in the hood playing ball, seven on seven, whatever they doing, tackle football, and then you show up and you blessing them, right? Come on, man. Um, and so we don't see that part of like something that may be affecting you. Right. Right, behind the scenes. So like, can you give us a little bit of uh, background on like how important your grandparents are to you and right. um, the role they play in your life and then like, what's going on now? Cause I didn't know that. Um, well, obviously like my grandparents raised me, you know, um, my, my mom and dad was, you know, very young, you know, they had me at a young age. So um, my mom, parents, um, they're like, they so awesome. Like they, uh, they raised me since I was a kid. And obviously my mom was there the whole time. And, um, but 
My grandparents raised me. Um, they taught me everything that I know, the old school, traditional way, how to be humble, how to make your bed in the morning, like those kind of things, you feel me? Um, taking out the trash, I had chores each and every day doing stuff like that, um, teaching me how to be responsible. And, you know, um, I grew up, you feel me? Like it, it was a good life, but I wouldn't say it was, it was the greatest life because it was, it was some moments that um, we would wake up with no lights and stuff like that. Um, let, no electricity and stuff like that, man. So I would go to sleep. I would hear my grandma crying, hearing my granddad, hearing them argue all the time, saying, it's gonna be better, it's gonna be better. And from that moment on, man, I, I just told myself like, you know, um, whenever I get a break at this football thing or whenever I get a chance to like help change their lives, man, I'm, I'm gonna do it. And, you know, they, they've been great. like. Even when I was in college, I went through my situation. They had my back no matter what. And that's what parents are for, man. Like, without them, I feel like I wouldn't be where I am today because they've been married for like over 60 years. And they like, for real. And what's crazy is you can never break those two apart. And I, I just love how beautiful their relationship is. And I model to have one just like them one day. And what's going on right now, I just feel like um, it's, 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 it's just everyday family problems. You feel me? Like we, every, everybody has problems in, in every family situation. And right now I'm in a time of my life that, you know, um, I wanna be able to have a relationship with my mom. Like, like I never had like a, a, mom and, a mom and son relationship in my life. Mm -hmm. I, I told you that my mom was there, but she was young. Like she was, she was living a life. So I understand that. Yeah, more you like me? siblings, if anything. Ex exactly. Yeah. So I used to call my mom by her name. You feel me? Like even up until last year, I was still calling my mom by her by her name. But now I'm calling her mom. You feel me? So I never really had that relationship. My mom lives with me. By the way, she been living with me for three years now, and like it's kind of like it's kind of like jealousy almost. Like you forgot about us. You feel me? But it's never, it's never that. It's never that I forgot about you. It's just that I never had a relationship with my mom. You feel me? And I always wanted that. You feel me? So we just going through that right now. And I'm sure that'll pass over, man, once, you know, we get through the season. It's just right now, I'm, I'm not going to dive into it because it's too much energy. You feel me? I'm going to say that for another time. And then because I know right now, um, the most important thing to me is obviously my kids and football and just doing everything right for this team. So. Um, yeah, man. Damn, bro, I appreciate you opening up there because it's, it's, like- It's hard, it's hard, man. Because all we see is Cheetah, and Cheetah is like the best on mountaintop. And so for you to open up during this time in the middle of the season and talking about something that's, that's tough. It, 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 it weighs on me like, you know, every night, man, not being able to talk to my granddad, man. Cause I'm used to my granddad calling me after every game, like saying, hey, you could have done this better or, hey, I saw something that you could have done, like you would have been open. You feel me? Like I kind of miss those moments between me and my granddad, but obviously I know, like, I know he's still watching. Like I know he's still sure. watching. Cause I get on Facebook and like, I see him like watching our games, Dolphins game, and he's still turning up every time I score. So, you know, um, that makes so, me feel so, good. So, so, and this is a loaded question. Why not call him? It's tough, man. I, I, I just feel like, for me, man, it'd be like so many emotions tied into it, man. Cause like, I really love, I love my grandparents. Like I love them. Like if something ever happened to my grandparents, I don't know what I'd do. Like I'd probably quit football or something. Like, it's just crazy. Like I know I can call them, but I just know it's just not right now for me. Like I got to keep all of my emotions in football. And what's crazy is my mom still calls, calls her parents every day though. So that's good though. You feel me? So as long as my mom is checking in with them, and my mom, she lets me know like, hey, your granddad, he wanted to let me let you know that he still love you and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. it's, it's coming back. I mean, I, for me, what happened when I was playing, mm -hmm. played at UCF and at the time we were mid-major, I would say we big dogs now. They need mm -hmm. to consider us a power five. Right. Feel me? But uh, during that time we was in a Mac and we would go to Eastern, uh, East Carolina, Western Michigan, Buffalo. And so we would play all these little random schools. Mm -hmm. And my t my family, we from Pittsburgh. And they would all load up and they'd come watch me play. 
But even before I got to college, like my uncles and aunts, the real ones would come see me play when I was little league in high school. Right. So this was just our tradition, a football family, and they always, we always show love. And it, not just me, but Ray Ray, my cousin, uh, Buster, this person, that person, like right. just show love to the kids. And so <clears throat> I get to the league, and the first couple years was cool. They would get buses, they would tailgate, they would get hotels, they'd come check me out. Right. I signed my big deal. And my aunt, my aunt Ronnie, she orchestrates all of this stuff. Oh, wow. Right? So she, she hit me up one week. Once I got my big deal, Dolphins, Miami Dolphins gave me five for 50. Mm -hmm. I became the highest paid wide receiver in the league. Dolphins, they making somebody the highest paid receiver. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? But hey, listen, I'll be like, damn, boy, I made 10. Cheetah's at 30. Damn, damn. <laughs> that's a big gap, bro. Hey, you set the standard, Cheetah. though. You set the standard, 10 to 30? Though. You set the standard, that's though. That's a big gap. You set the standard, though, like, for damn, all receivers. I, I couldn't wait five more years to start playing in the NFL. <laughs> <laughs> with that 30, hold on real quick. What that 30 feel like, bro? It's crazy. Like, you don't even check no. your bank account every day, obviously. But, like, once I signed it, I was like, is this real? Drew was like, yes, it's real, baby. But, you know, but you no, know how no, football No, 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 no. Stay is, right though. there. Don't go humble. Don't go grandparents. Uh -uh, uh -uh, We're going to get back uh -uh, to that. Uh -uh, We're going to get back uh -uh. to that. Cheetah, 30 a year. What that feel like, bro? Because, like, it was like every two weeks, I think, when I was making 10, it was like $500,000 or something every two weeks I was making or maybe even more. But, but you know how it is, though. Like, you know how football is, though. Like, you don't get all your money. Like, everything's not promised. Like, in, Cheetah, in, in, like, in my country, everything is backloaded. To answer the question, Cheetah, how did it feel to be one of the richest men in the world? Man, I'm not I'm not rich at all, bro. I'm not you see how I'm dressed? I'm not rich at all. I'm still wearing Soul Runner, the brand I created. And hey. you invested millions of dollars in Soul Runner, so no. <laughs> no, sir. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. <laughs> no, but uh so I make it to the league, bro, and I and I signed that big deal with the Miami Dolphins. And so what ended up happening was, I think we we're going to Detroit. Mm -hmm. And my aunt hit me and she's like, yo, everybody tripping. We're talking about 40 or 50 people, big family. Mm -hmm. They're like, well, why ain't Brandon paying for the bus? Oh, why wow. ain't Brandon paying for yeah. the hotel and all the food for tailgating and 40 tickets? And you know that get expensive. Right, and tickets get expensive. Before it was they was paying. And my aunt went to him and she said, well, why don't we do what we can? And then I'll go to Brandon and say, yo, we came up two, three thousand, five thousand short. And you cool with that? And I'm cool with that. And they didn't want to do that. And in that moment, bro, we're talking about five years I played 13, that 40, 50 person bus stopped showing up to my game. Mm. I don't talk to some of my, like, I'm talking about aunts that raised me, uncles that raised me. It's bro. crazy, bro. Money is the root to all the evil, bro. Like, I don't know if you really believe in, but believe in that, but it is, bro. It's crazy how like people like act, man, just over something that you work your hard, your hard time for, man, which is which is ridiculous. I don't I don't understand it, man. Like you the OG, like teach me something right now. Right. Like what what should I do? Yeah. So, well, I don't know all of your situation, mm -hmm. you know, when it comes to the, your grandparents, but just talking about the money situation. I'm just saying family in general. Right. I think that we draw the circle. This is what I always say. You draw the circle, uh -huh. and then we say, this is who I'm putting into the circle. Grandparents, mom, my kids, my lady, blah, blah, blah. This, this one or two, three homeboys, whatever. And then what you do is you say, okay, I'm going to be there for them. But then you teach them how you're going to be there for them, right? So now, boom, cheetah making, it's public, so I ain't 30 million a year. Not so making hey, 30 million. So now we all sit down and say, look, this is what I'm making, but this is the reality because you know we taking home half of that. Exactly. After every, boom. There you go. Here's my plan. This money got to last me and my kids, kids. Generational, So man. here's my plan. I, I'm allocating X amount of dollars a year mm -hmm. to family and friends contribution. If you come with X, Y, and Z, I'll be there for you if it fits into my financial plan. Do we all agree? We all agree. Great. Cool. Because everybody got great ideas, but it's like, yo, I want to invest in a business plan. Right. I want to invest in you coming out of school because you know what you're doing. You're going into this industry now. Right. Right. That's what I'm investing in. Come on. Use me, but don't use me. Yeah, that's go. what I always just say to my that, people. That we talking. Bro, I feel like that's one of my biggest failures, I feel like, 
in my career, and I did a lot. It's like, where's the other millionaires that made millions off of me? All right, bro, you come build, you study this market, you have a, a thorough business plan, you know what you're doing. I'm making $10 million a year? I'll gladly invest 100,000, 200,000. That's just making our infrastructure and our family unit all stronger and better. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it, it starts with that circle and it starts with boundaries. And then it's us sitting down having those real conversations. Mm -hmm. and, and from there, um, that's, any, the, that's yeah. them tough and uncomfortable conversations right there. That's what people don't want to have. People want you to just say yes, though. You know how it is, man. People just want you to autom exactly. automatically say yes every time. What they say to us, uh, you know, learn how to say no. They told you that when you came in the league. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah, learn, how to, say learn no. how to say no. You're right, bro, but like, I feel like we're first generation leaders like in this new space as far as millionaires and potential billionaires as um, athletes. And we gotta lead our family. And it's unfortunate, right? Because like now quickly the children become the leaders. Mm -hmm. It's like grandpa, grandma been leading the family for so long, mom and dad trying to do their thing. And then all of a sudden we make it, now we gotta be here. Right. Are we prepared to lead? That's the big thing. And, and that's the big thing um, in our family right there. Um, everybody uh, kind of looks at me kind of as like the leader. Um, even like me living with my mom and my sister, like um, they look at me as like, you know, the father, even though it's my mom, she look at me as like the man in the house. You feel me? So I'm like the leader. Like I never can show a sign of weakness. I got to be here. I got to be there and I got to be able to, to listen to them whenever they got problems and stuff like that. So. I do it a lot, man, off the field, man. But it's fun though. I'm 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 very glad that, you know, um, I'm able to take all of this on because I got a daughter of my own and it's just preparing me for those moments. That's right. all it's doing. I wanna stay right there for a little bit, bro, because like well, this is what I'm finally learning. I'm about to turn 40 mm. in March. Yeah. I said you were 37. For real? Yeah, bro. You think I can still do it? Yes. Okay, all right. Yes, bro. As Let's a tight end though. <laughs> yeah, I agree with the you. The game has changed, man. I agree with you. I tight end, I'll come catch 40 balls. Yeah. But but uh, I don't know if that's true, bro. That's that's what they've been telling us. What? Don't show no weakness. I think vulnerability is critical. Now, if it, you're it, Coach McDaniel and you got a, you got 90 guys in the off season that's in your locker room, and you walk in the team meeting room like you got to be strong. And I agree with what you're saying there. There you go. And then also when you're running a company, which you are, and also as the head of the household. But the problem is, bro, like. Where are we then turning to, to have these type of conversations? We're like, yo, this shit's hard, this shit heavy. We don't do that. We'll stand in front of the people that we're supposed to be strong mm -hmm. for. And we stand there and we hold it all in and we don't have no outlet. So there's no therapist, there's no, we don't really talk like that as men. And so like, I do agree with you to some extent, but you got to find an outlet where you can then talk, turn to a brother or someone, a professional is like, yo, this is tough. This is hard because that's where we break down. No. And that's why I asked you if you're happy and how you feel, because you can be here dealing with all of this. Right. And it, but it comes with so much. Now, I will say um, I do got a guy that I talk to every week. Um, a guy that I, I've been using, you know, ever since I entered the league. You know, he's a therapist. Um, and he's been helping me, you know, throughout all of this. You feel me? I call him with daily, you know, up, updates about how I'm doing with my family and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, um, it's, it's really the same thing he's been telling me throughout my whole entire career, you know, um, which is vision, which is vision pursue. Um, when you already expect somebody to do a certain thing, like it shouldn't bother you. You feel me? So um, I do have people that I talk to. So because I, I mean, trust me, like, you know how we grew up. We grew up, our parents told us, don't show no weakness. Yeah. Even when you fall and get hurt, don't cry and stuff right. like that. But now we're in a space that times are changing, things are evolving and you gotta be able to talk to somebody. You gotta be able to, you know, um, be able to tell people how you really feel. And now that I got kids of my own, I'm, I'm slowly understanding that. That's good, that's beautiful, Come bro. On now. Yeah, I mean, you asked me a powerful question. It's like, you know, you the OG, what can I do? I think you're doing all the right things. Um, it's gonna be beautiful seeing you and your grandparents, your parents getting back together. Come on, man. You know, but, and I, but I do agree with your approach too. It's like, you know, right now, and that's what people gotta understand. Right now, I can't unpack this right now. You know, <sighs> February, March, let's see where we at. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Let's unpack that. But I do recommend that you know, me not understanding all the details and that's not for everybody. 
you shared what you wanted to share. Yeah. I do think that that's important because I can feel it. I can see it. It's like that's an important relationship to very, me. Very, very important, man. That's something that's got me to where I am today. I, I would always claim my grandparents no matter what, man. Because we only got one life. Right. You feel me? And I, I always want to, you know, let them know how important they are. You know, even if they don't feel important in the moments where I'm, I'm, I'm heated at something else or in the moments where I'm not talking to them, I still want them to know how important they are to me. It's good. The team that they face in week one, the Dallas Cowboys are just drastically better than them. I and disagree. Come on now, Brady. I just played 13 You're years. Playing like, can you new, listen to me? It's nuance here, though. What it's I'm, not nuance. It is nuance. Do what's best for them. Half-ass a playoff appearance. He didn't half ass. Brady, it. pull up his stats. He half ass. He gave us say, one game. When you, the minute something doesn't unfold the way that you want to, he checks out. He chose not to pay James Harden. What I'm interested in learning from you is, uh, you know, what success looks like. You know, so my question is like, how do you define success? How do I define a success? Well, success to me is, you know, something that you've been trying to accomplish your whole life, you know, and then when you finally, you know, accomplish it, you know, it'll be worth it. You feel me? Like this legacy that obviously I'm trying to build and set the standard for my kids, man. Um, when, whenever it's said and done, I've beat on set records. You know, obviously beat on made a lot of money and um, beat on inspired a lot of kids. And to me, that that's what success is, man. Just being able to, you know, be a key factor in inspiring people because I feel like that's what my purpose is in 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 this life that that. Um, that um, God has given me, man. So that's what success is to me, man. And that's what I do. And that's why I do what I do. Like each each and every off season, I travel the world um, to to these different cities and put on these different camps, man, for these kids because I want to see the next great wave of successful young men and women too. Though that's what success is: being able to put together a plan and see it go through successfully. And everything that you work for is, you know, accomplished. Right. So right now, I'm one of the best receivers, one of the highest paid. And aren't you the highest paid? I don't know. Probably, aren't you the best receiver? I don't know. I don't know. I'm I'm just in a real good situation. I'm just in a real good situation, man. What you want me to say? You want you want me to sit on this podcast right now and say yes? I want you to be I vulnerable. Am. Bro, for the first time, I told myself a couple weeks ago that I love me. Mm. Have you ever told yourself you love you? Like, I love you. Bro, what's crazy is that's part of my pregame ritual. Like, every morning I wake up, you know, I do, you know, deep breathing, and I look in the mirror and I say, thank you, God. I love me. I say that every Sunday morning before the game, every time, every time. What do you love about you? I just love me, man. I just love this great body that God has given me, like everything, you know, God has blessed me with, man. And it's great, you feel me? Even throughout the trials and tribulations, I just love me. Like T.O. say, I love me, so me. Yeah. See, but when T.O. said it that way, that comes off as arrogant and cocky, the way he used it. Mm. But but that but only he knows what he was feeling, so I, I'm not judging him. Right. The way how we're talking about it right now is like self-care. It's like a deep love, bro. Like before the world can love us or we can, a lady can love us, our kids can love us. We gotta love ourselves. Gotta love yourself That's right. why it was powerful for me. Cause I'm like, damn, like I love me. I never said that before. And so if we can say, if you can say, look in the mirror and say, I love me. 25 times. But why 25 times? 25 times. <sighs> go ahead, bro. What's the routine? Go ahead before I, cause I can go anywhere. That's beautiful. This is, this is, yes. What's the pregame routine? It's not even a routine. It's like, that's the routine to, to success. Because that's yeah. when I'm like, yo, give us the keys to success. Tyreek's Hills, keys to success, bro. Like, that's what I want. Twenty. When I wake up in the morning, the first thing I do is this, boom. I look in the mirror, I do my breathing, boom. And then I'm looking at myself. You see, 25 times, ain't no, you ain't say 11. 25 times. 25 times. 25 times. Like, give me that. Times, right. Give us that. So yeah, obviously you wake up, brush your teeth, you know, you do your morning routines and stuff with your face. Um, then I just wake up, you know, thank God for the day, do my deep breathing 25 times, do say thank you God for another day 25 times. Then I also, you know, just 
just say I love me, man. Like, because like, I just feel like without that self care, just like you said, without, you know, me being confident in myself, I wouldn't be able to do what I do each and every day. You feel me? Because the odds are already against me. I'm a smaller guy playing this position and- So, just, so hands. And <laughs> we we'll get into that. But, you know, um, you just gotta, you just gotta believe in yourself, man. And I just think me being able to start my day off like that by, you know, thanking God and just saying that I love myself helps me get started in that way. That's a powerful thing. And there's, that's a whole nother podcast, just like self care. You believe and, in uh, dopamine? Oh, 400%. There you go. That's all you're doing right there. When you're doing that deep breathing, you like taking it all in and you just saying all them words of affirmation to yourself in the mirror, you just building up your dopamine. That's all it that's is. That's right. What else do you do? And I don't know if you've been able to define it and write it out, put it on paper, but like you may think as a high performer that that's just something small, but the world don't have access to the guy you've been working with for years. Um, the world don't even, majority of the world don't think like you. You're like part of the 1% when right. it comes to thinking right. mindset. So like, is there anything else that you do that will bless other people watching this, you know? Uh, as far as pregame or just? It's, it's just routine, period. Just like, how do you, how do we become a high performer? Like, whether you're a mom, a dad, a nurse, a firefighter, another athlete that's trying to get over the hump. Mm -hmm. You just got to stay consistent. I, I feel like um, we sometimes get bored of doing just the basic fundamentals of just life or just, if you're in a profession, you get bored of just doing the basic fundamentals of just everything, well, I'm gonna speak in football perspective, fundamentals, techniques, and um, just your routine each and every day. Um, every Tuesday at four o'clock, um, I got this guy come in, we, and we work for four hours on my body, and it literally hurts. Something that I don't like to do, um, but it's part of my routine. And it's the same way with, you know, um, going to practice. So we practice, obviously, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And you know, as the season go on, like your body begin to get tired and your mindset is like mentally drained and it's like, bro, why are we doing this again? Mm -hmm. But if you fall in love with just the basic fundamentals and the techniques and just waking up every day and being in the great position that you're in, like you will, you, I promise you, you will become successful because there are some days too though, I, I don't want to practice, but I got to remember like, I'm not only doing this for myself, dog. Like I'm trying to create a whole new wave. I wanna, I wanna be like, like I said earlier in the show. I wanna be able to set the standard for my family, like, and that's my mindset each and every day. So you can ask my teammates. At each, every Wednesday, every Thursday, every Friday, it's the same mentality for, from me at practice. I'm full speed and I'm finishing 15 yards down the field every time I catch the ball, cause I wanna be able to set the standard and also I wanna be able to break the record too, though. You feel me? So, and. If other guys see me doing that, guess what? They're going to they gonna cling on and they're going to do it. Like Jalen Waddle going to do it. Um, Braxton Berrios going to do it. Um, Xavier Howard on the, on the defensive side of the ball. He's going to start punching the ball a lot because they see how hard, you know, I'm working at practice. Like, this ain't come overnight. Like, I've been doing this my whole entire life. It's because of the, the small things that my grandparents taught me and my parents taught me. Like, doing the small things, it's going to get boring. But you got to fall in love with it. You feel me? Like... So oh, yeah. you said earlier, believe in, you just talked about the record, mm -hmm. right? I think a lot of people know, but there's some people this podcast is going to reach that don't know who Tyreek is or Brandon Marshall or I Am Athlete or the, the, what you spoke, you know, a year ago. I'm not going to waste our time with asking you, do you believe? I know you believe that you're, you can break the record, right? but why? Why do you believe that you're going to be the one that eclipsed 2,000 for the first time at the wide receiver position? Uh, and as of right now, you're on pace. I'm on pace. We're what, week six, and you got week 800 six. and how many yards? 814. 814. 814, baby. Um, like, and, and, and like, I, I just want you to take this space and really talk to us, bro. Like, you're teaching us right now, bro, because I, like, I see visualization. I think, well, I see dreaming. I see visualization. Mm -hmm. I see work ethic. I see, like, like a big audacious goal, like why? Um, this is year two, you know, going into the Miami Dolphins scheme. Um, we, we have a great team, obviously, um, offensively, and I'm gonna speak, 
you know, only from the offensive side of the ball. Our coaches do a great job of just, you know, putting me in positions to just, you know, be me and just play fast, man. It's crazy. Like you see the zigzag motions. You see sometimes I'm lining up at tight end. Like you never know what's going to come, man. And we have so many dynamic playmakers on this team that you don't know when when I'm going to get the ball, which is crazy. So that's why I believe so much, man. And and then it's just my mindset each and every day. Like I wake up like with the same mindset, just like we were just talking about Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Like I'm gonna break this record. Like. I don't care what happens to me after my after this season, but I'm breaking this record. I don't care if I gotta like go to sleep every night at 9:30, like let go of some things, or I'm breaking this record and I'm gonna bust my tail to do it, man. Because like the way our quarterback is playing right now is lights out, man. So shout out to my boy Tua, man. Um, and yeah, that, that's why I believe, man. Why is that important to you, though? The like, record, like yeah, when when talk to me about when you first had this thought. It's like, why did this record? And then, like, why is it important? Because, man, like, not only will I be able, you know, to obviously be in the record books, but it also be, like, something, you know, to just say, hey, I got this 5'9", 195 pounds, can also play the receiver position. Because you know how it is, man. People look at receiver and it's like, hey, we want this guy that's six foot or we want this guy that's a certain size. And it's like, bro, no, like, you literally have guys who can who can literally just play football. I'm just a football player, you feel me? And I really understand the game of football. Like I've been playing this game my whole entire life. My my granddad was a coach and he's taught it to me to a level where it's like, like I'm calling the defense. Like I'm seeing the defense before they even line up. And it's like, bro, like you have guys that literally understand the position and it doesn't matter how big they are, how big their hands are, because my hands aren't that big, but I know how to track the ball. I know how to catch the ball. I've been doing it my whole life. You feel me? So I just, I just. But a lot be... of us have though. Uh, a lot of us, bro. Like a lot of us. Like there's been so many greats that come through. Mm -hmm. Jerry Rice. You know Ocho to. You know Justin Jefferson is one there. Calvin Johnson almost did it. Cooper Cup. Cooper Cup almost, almost did, did it. it. Like yep. what makes you think that you're the one? Like what? And what I'm getting to is like. What's that thing in you that makes you believe like, oh yeah, I'm the one to do it? Can't teach speed. <laughs> you really? can't coach speed, baby. No, I feel like that's too easy. Yeah, I'm taking the easy route out, man. You can't coach speed, man. Like, what you want me to say? Like, there's a lot of cats that had speed. Like, what's in you? What's the genius in you? Whether it's some IQ, like what you just said. I, I don't know if I've ever heard you talk about ball that way. It's like, y'all see what's happening before it's happening. Yeah, I do. You know what I I'm do. saying? Yeah, yeah, And yeah. even what I told you offline, I'm like, yo, bro, when you was in KC, I never even put you in my top five. That's how crazy it was. Like, this yeah, dude was just is, fast. He's which, gadget. Which, like, which is crazy. Which is crazy, bro. Like, I give people crazy work. But the thing is, though, I never, like, approach anybody and say, hey, I'm top five. It's like, bro, like, I know my work speak for itself. And I knew, like, once I left KC, like, the whole world would be able to see me, you know, as me, like, you feel me? Cause cheater gonna cheater. I'm gonna be cheater all day, man. Like I'm gonna have fun, I'm gonna make my plays. But what's, what, what people really don't know is that I know the game of football inside out. And, you know, um, something my dad always told me is, you know, before you line, line up, man, safeties, safeties will always tell you the story to a defense. And that's one thing that I always look at, the safeties, like whether it's cover four, whether it's cover three, or whether it's man, right. you feel me? And if y'all got a back lined up at receiver and it's a backer out there, you know it's obviously man. So um, me being able to, to read coverages and understand defenses and understand, you know, different pursuit angles defenders are trying to take, you know, to slow me down and stuff like that. I understand all of that, man. So. Which is crazy is because, like, I always say the greats in basketball, football, any sport, they have this insane IQ, mm -hmm. off-the-charts IQ, right? And so, like, I'm, I'm glad that we're talking about this because, you know, there's a lot of kids out there that's working on the physical but really don't have it here Got to. or don't understand how important that is. Bro. Because it allows you to play faster. It yeah. allows you actually to tap into the physical even more. When you know, oh, cover four, he's coming here. This dude's rocking. You know, he's disguising. So this is here. So boom, instead of me, this is going to be a bail. It's going to be bail coverage. So I'm not going to pat at the line. Like, I'm just going. Like, 
So I'm, I'm glad that we, we were able to talk that's about why, this. That's why I feel like a lot of guys really don't succeed at the, the receiver position. Like you may see them get drafted first round, second yeah. round, because they don't have the ability to understand coverages and understand the defensive backs leverage or this and that, man. Like if you understand that, man, I swear the game will slow down immensely and it's crazy, man. So um, yeah, man, I, I don't I don't run I, I don't run lines. When, when I'm out there playing, I, I just react. The great Drew Breeze said, don't run lines, man. Just react. Whenever you just out there playing, just, just let it happen naturally. Just right. react. So. You said something earlier, and, and and I know you already touched on this before, but I'm going to ask you again. Why'd you leave KC? Like, some would say, well, it ain't some. I was like, what the is bro doing? It's Patrick Mahomes. He can go down as the greatest quarterback ever, ever to live. Is yes. he taking him for granted? Right. Like, why'd you leave KC? Man, this is a lot to unpack, man. Um, strong question. Um, you know what? To be honest, it was a situation where, like, my agent was trying to bait KC into giving me a contract. The idea was to never leave, you know, KC. And that's the first thing I told my agent, by the way. I was like, got on the phone. You, you feel me? He was like, Rick, I'm going to fly down to you tomorrow. Um, we're going to talk about our plan of attack to how we're going to get you a new contract in KC. You feel me? And um, yeah, I was like, look, as long as I don't get traded, because we just lost in the uh, AFC Championship, I'm trying to get back at the Bengals, bro. <laughs> it's like, okay, cool. We're we not going to get traded. We're just going to get you a new deal. So cool. He fly down the next day. We talk and stuff like that. We still on the same page. He get on the phone with Brett Veach and he's like, Veach, look, we're going to be forced to ask for a trade if you don't get Rika contract. Veach is like, okay, like yada, yada, yada. Let's talk numbers. You feel me? So they talk numbers. Pat called me first, me and Pat get on the phone. We, we, go, we like, we, we gonna take care of you, bro. I said, bro, just take care of me, bro. I don't gotta be the highest paid. Just make the guarantee, sign right, and we good. Then Andy called me and it was like, hey, yeah, man, we gonna take care of you. Like, obviously, like, we want you to get you on a team friendly. I said, I'm cool with that. I think it can be 24 million, as long as the money sign right. 25 million, as long as, the, long, long as the guarantee sign right. That's all I want, guaranteed. So. That's when things began to go left. Cause my agent, you know how Drew Rosenhaus is. He won't, he won't, he going for the juggler. He like, look, we need that guaranteed money, dog. So the Chiefs weren't budging at all. That's when, you know, I guess the trade began to, you know, come into, you know, Drew's head. It was like, Reek, we gonna get you traded for what you, for what you deserve. You're I'm like, I'm like, what do I deserve? He's like, bro, you deserve at least 70 million, bro. Like, he's like, I've been with you for four years now. Like, and I see the potential. Like, but you know how agents talk though. Like they just want the money. But me and Drew, like we got a real personal relationship off the field though. Like we done became almost like brothers and it's crazy. So it come to the trade, the first two teams that come to mind, I told them, I said, I want to play in Miami though, if I do get traded. Cause when I play on Madden, I used to always trade myself to Miami. You feel me? I used to always want to play with, play on Miami cause of Dan Marino, man. And you know, Pat Sertan and all the, all the great players that came through here, Ricky Williams, all the great players. So I gotta get to Miami. It's like, okay. Miami called, they offered. Then the Jets called and then they offered. I'm like, okay, I can go to the Jets. Then I can be with Adam Sandler because I'm a huge Adam Sandler fan. I want to go into acting when I'm done. So I'm like <laughs> thinking about that too. I'm like, man, either I can go to New York and be with Adam Sandler or I can be with the Jets. <laughs> so Miami offered like 70 the first day. The Jets offered like 68. So I'm, I'm sitting there thinking, you said, just think about it. Then the Jets came back and offered like 76 guaranteed. I, I, I'm just I'm just randomly speaking. I think it was more guaranteed than what the Dolphins. the Dolphins offered. But then, you know, the more I began to talk, my mom was like, hey, you need to think about not only Adam Sandler, but you need to think about them state taxes too. That's when my mama began. She began, she, she became a mom, then she like, hey, you're right. about those state taxes too though. <laughs> Right. I, I think she just really didn't want to go to New York. But, but no, that's real though. Those state, that's I think it's the highest. What New York, Jersey? It's, it's like it's like nine, ain't it? Yeah, it's nine, crazy. Nine yeah, it's up there. It's like it's, yeah, it's up there. It's, it's up wild. there. So Mama my, right. Mom was right. Mom, when she was like, "Look, I know you love Adam Sandler. He made the little basketball movie, but you need to think about she made you know basketball. off the food, off the field stuff, which is taxes, state taxes." She's like, "You go to Miami, go to Miami. Like, I'm gonna be on the beach. I'm gonna be living my life." <laughs> Hot girl summer back. I'm looking like, okay, we're it's not doing you. that. We're not doing that. So, you know, I, I I mean, we thought about it long and hard. You know, um, I talked to Zach Wilson. I, I love Zach Wilson. I'm, I'm a fan of Zach Wilson. Let's go Zach Wilson, man. 
he's 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 a great kid, humble kid. Um, he wants to be great, right. and I think with Aaron Rodgers being there, he gonna he gonna be ten times. So so when you talked to Zach, where it was like you didn't feel like that was it? Nah, it was it was just like man, my dream is here though in Miami. Like I, I, I traded myself in franchise on Madden in, in Miami, but. My mom made me think about them state taxes, though. But not really. Your dream was to stay in KC. And the dream was they to stay in KC. They, what, what did they? So they what offered. They, what was their final offer? Their final offer was close to like fifty-eight million, guaranteed. And it was like, can't we, even. we can't we can't sign that. So then we just signed with you know Miami, and you know I I feel like everything happens for a reason. You know our our great God is never wrong. Um, I think it was just one of those situations that. You know, um, I just needed to be, you know, me. I just needed to be free, you know? Like, let me show my personality. That's something that my parents always taught me. Show your personality. And ever since I've been in Miami, I've been able to show my personality. So Not, no regrets? No regrets. No regrets at all, man. I'm, I'm glad, you know, everything happened that way. I'm, I'm glad that, you know, um, I believed in myself, you know, in, in coming to Miami. And everything's great. When you was watching the Super Bowl last year, did you put yourself in that uniform like, damn, that if I was out there? Oh, I'm going for 200. You go but, for <laughs> but but still though, like I, I was still happy to see my boys though. Like I still talk to Pat, I still talk, talk to Kelsey. A lot of people may think that we got beef. You know, a lot of people, I still talk to Chris Jones. A lot of people still may think we got beef, but those are still my brothers. Like we still went to war. Now I'm gonna get on Twitter and troll them each and every day and, and mess with them, you feel me? Cause that's what siblings do. That's what we do. We have fun with each other. But, um, I still love those guys. When they won the Super Bowl, I was turned up. I was in Japan actually, and I was uh I was excited for my boys. All right, that's yeah, dope. Man, that's, that's what it's dope. about. All right, so I'm gonna get to some football stuff real quick, and then we are gonna land the plane here, bro. Really appreciate your time. Nah, I appreciate it, man. You talked about how, you know, you love your boys. Don't don't do it, man. No, you gotta do it, bro. Don't give me the political stuff, bro. You gotta pick one or the other. Okay. Tua, or Mahomes. Ah. <sighs> I got some old Ain't nothing but no, that's energy drink in there. You're right. You I talk need, about I, that. I, I mean, you look at that, that, that like got some lick in there. Ain't no lick in this I'm going to need some energy <laughs> while I'm drinking this, trying to answer that question. I'm, I just don't. No answer. Uh, Give okay. the people. Be honest and tell us why. It's okay. Well, we all know, man, Pat is still the best quarterback in the, in the NFL, obviously, man. Like, what he does is just something that no quarterback in this league can copy. You feel me? His ability to create plays when there aren't plays to make is just it's just ridiculous. And then just the arm talent and just, you know, him being him and it's just crazy. Now you would think that a receiver like me would, would want to play would would like that, right? But I'm in Miami. I'm with Tua, man. I'm living the life, man. Tua is accurate. He's on time. He's he's ball is right here, quarterback friendly. Like, so I gotta go with my boy Tua, man. I'm I love, I love Pat. He's the best quarterback in the league, but I gotta go with my boy one, man. One is different. It's fair to say that's like the the right answer, right? Cause if I don't say it, then he's not gonna throw me the ball. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but like I'm going it. one anyways. I'm going one anyways. And, then, and that's a tough situation though, like, you know, and it's hard because like I don't know if you might be pushing two thousand yards if you was with Patrick Mahomes too. There, there you go. There you go. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I think Pat has an opportunity to go down as – definitely going to go down as the best thrower of the football ever. Oh. But he has an opportunity, if he can win a couple more, as the best quarterback ever. This dude different, bro. Pat, Patrick Mahomes is different. Like, me being able to just witness that each and every day, like, the way he just creates, the way he thinks, and the way he practices. Like, I just love the way he practices. Explain. Like, his mindset is like – Ah, it's, it's so hard to explain. Like his mind, like I seen this dude come in the locker room. We was playing the Saints. Like he had got sacked like seven times and a half. Like he came into the locker room cussing everybody out. I'm like, yo, I got my headphones in. I'm like vibing. Like we losing at halftime. I'm vibing. He 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 letting the whole offense have it. I got my headphones in, but but I hear him. He like, man, y'all got a block, man, or, or y'all got to get out the fucking game. I'm like, okay, <laughs> this is what I signed up for. Right. I love that kind of energy right there, man. So Pat, man, like, he's a, he's a different character whenever it comes to, like, football, man, and Competing. just seeing him being able to switch that and, you know, um, just change hats and then be a father is just amazing, just amazing, man. Like, th that's one thing I'm, I'm slowly, like, shaping into. Like, that's right. Like, when to, like, wear certain hats. 
like, okay, when I'm at home, I'm a son, I'm a father, and I'm I'm not thinking about football. But obviously, when I'm in football, I'm wearing my football hat. So that's good. And that's something hard. I'm learning. What year is this for you? Eight. Yeah, you're right there. It's so hard, bro, because it's like 24 seven. And then for me, what I would do when I got to New York is when I, you know, when I got to Chicago, when I got traded from the Miami Dolphins, I figured it out. Mm -hmm. And it was just a drive home. As soon as I hit the door, it's like that shit's over with. Beast, they called me the Beast. Cheetah's better. Um, but it's like that beast, he stays in that van. But I get my calls out the way. You know, anything I was holding out the way. And then as soon as I walked in, boom, hey, daddy's here. Bath time, story time. I don't mm -hmm. know. You need me to wash the dishes, babe? Okay, cool. Yeah, Whatever. Yeah. It's time to put be. it on. Yeah. So, no, I'm glad that you're thinking that way. A um, couple more and then we'll, 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 we'll land a plane here. What's the most freakish thing that you've seen Patrick Mahomes do? The freakish thing? I it will, could have been in practice. Man, um, I would say a no-look 60-yard bomb. Crazy. Crazy. No-look 60-yard bomb. Oh, I've, been, I've, been, I've been getting goosebumps telling people the story about Aaron Rodgers in the 7-on-7 tournament. Where that was the first time I seen a dude throw a no-look 40-yard bomb. Well, Pat just upped him 20 yards. So, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, why didn't know anybody else did that? Oh, it's all in practice, bro. It's crazy, bro. Just seeing the things that that bro used to do, and it's like, bro, like a no look sixty yard bomb, bro. Like, what did they make you at, bro? <laughs> crazy. He's different. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Got to pick one. McDaniel's or Andy Reid. Ah. Uh, well, I'm, I'm gonna give you my explanation on both. Like, Coach Reid is obviously, you know, like. He goaded. Um, he goaded. Goaded. Definitely goaded. Uh, he wanted a guy. He wanted a. He wanted the guru, gurus of the offensive mindset. You feel me? Like the way he's able to, you know, call plays um, at the right time, like set up plays and stuff like that. He's good at real. He's real good at, at setting stuff up. You feel me? But Coach McDaniel, like his create, his creativity is like man. He's like man. I got all these gadgets and I want to use them. And it's like. Each and every each and every week, we don't know what to expect. Like it's like, okay, is, is Reek going in motion, or is Devon, or Waddle, or Raheem? Like, who's getting the ball? You feel me? So, I don't know. That's that's a tough one, man. Like both of them are so good at what they're do, man. Ain't that tough one? You know the answer. Andy Reid. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna go Andy. I got I gotta go Andy, man, because Andy, he's like he's like the father of just offense, man. Right. And Coach McDaniel, he's still he young could potentially eclipse and, and learning. Yeah, yeah, obviously, yes. Right. But we got to win some Super Bowls, though. Got to win some Super Bowls. Got to win some Bowls, though. Y'all got an opportunity this year? Yes, for okay. sure. Um, McDaniels, what's one of the coolest things? Because it's, it's like he, the people love him. What's one of the coolest things that we, that you can share that hasn't gotten out? What makes Coach so great is he allow, he allows guys to be themselves. Like you know the whole Deion Sanders mentality. Yep. Like with him being a coach, it's like the same thing with Coach. You feel me? Like he allows guys to like have fun and just be themselves and you know sh show their personalities, man. Like and not saying not not all coaches do that, but it's like certain things that he he allows that I know Coach Reed wouldn't allow me to do. Right. And I got some crazy stories in KC. Like one, <laughs> which is crazy. So um, yeah, man. That, Go ahead, give us it. You can say it. All the all, all of my Chiefs brothers will, will enjoy this. So one time we was playing in, uh we was playing in Cincinnati, right? And and you are, and you will understand this. So you know how like the team leaves on Saturday, right? The day before the yep. game. So I flew to Memphis. I mean, I flew to Phoenix on a Friday. <laughs> yeah, to right. Do what? <laughs> so I took it upon myself, me. And um, a group of my friends, we flew to Phoenix for the little baby concert, man. Like we, I'm like, okay, cool. PJ, PJ. Yeah, PJ. We flew to Phoenix, man. I'm like, I'm gonna be back in time. You feel me? You yada yada yada. So we fly to Phoenix. Boom. We having a good time at the concert. It's time to go. So as we about to step on the plane, the uh, on the way back, the dude's like, hey, we probably won't be able to leave till like 7 a.m. And y'all won't make it back to KC to about you know 11:30. The, I'm like, I'm, the, I'm like, the, say, the buses leave at twelve. I'm, I'm like, say, say what now? He's like, yeah, man, some uh, wrong with the plane. Yeah, man, some wrong with the plane. And uh, so I'm like, <laughs> hold on, bro. 
you mean to tell me something wrong with this plane after the money I just paid y'all to fly me here and get me back on time? He's like, yeah. So I, I, it took me literally an hour to call Coach Reed because I was so scared, bro. I was so <laughs> scared, bro. It's like, bro, Coach Reed, bro, he a different piece, bro. So I called Coach, right? Coach, I'm like, Coach. <laughs> I'm laughing with Coach. I'm like, Coach, what's up? He like, he like, what's up, Cheeto? I'm like, Coach, man, like, you know, uh, shit, I'm in Phoenix. He like, Phoenix? What you doing in Phoenix? I'm like, shit, hey. Little baby concert, man, chilling. He's like, all right, as long as you make it back in time. I'm like, shh, about that, Coat. <laughs> I'm like, Coat, man, um, I see you in Cincinnati, though. He's like, Cincinnati? How you going to see me in Cincinnati? We got we to walk through in the morning. Then we got to get on the plane and go. I'm like, Coat, like, I'm in Phoenix. I ain't going to make it back. That's what I'm trying to say. And I put the phone down so I, so I wouldn't hear what he was saying because I knew he was going to get on my head. But then I picked it back up. He was like, Reek, bro, like, you can't be doing that during the season. Like, I need you locked in. I'm like, Coach, I know, bro, but you know how I am. Like, I, I, I was a Dennis Rodman fan. Dennis Rodman went to Vegas to hang with Carmen Electra. I'm trying to be that, Coach. <laughs> you ain't say that. No, nah, I ain't say all that. But <laughs> I was like, Coach, man, look, I'm sorry. He was like, Reek, I, I got to find you, but make sure you meet us in Cincinnati. So I ended up telling the PJ people to just drop me off in Cincinnati. Was it worth it? Oh man, it was worth it. It was great. Come on, it's always worth it, man. It's always worth it. I had a, I had, I had a good time. Right. All right. So these are quick ones, and then we going we done. How wide is the gap between your quarterback now Tua and your former quarterback Mahomes? Oh come on, man. Real quick. They're neck and neck. Those guys are neck and neck. Tua is, you know, um, obviously my boy Tua, he, he didn't have the start to, to his career the way he wanted, mm -hmm. but um, he's slowly changing people's minds right now as we speak, man. So at, the, at this rate, going off the year to, to this year, I would say Tua is a better quarterback. You feel me? But, you know, if we go over the course of careers, obviously Pat, you know, is, is different. So, so neck and neck. this year, neck and neck. Neck and neck. I like that. How confident are you that you guys will beat the Chiefs, mm. your former team, in London coming up? In Frankfurt, Germany. Oh, Frankfurt. That's right. Frankfurt. Thank you. There you go. Uh, it's gonna be a real good matchup. I, I just wish I just wish the the NFL didn't miss with that one and and would have put it in Arrowhead. Cause going back to Arrowhead is always electric, man. So it's gonna be a good game. Chiefs got a real good defense, and I think it's gonna be a, a real good game. I just hope I can score because I got I got I got a touchdown celebration. I've been I've been saving for that one. Can I may you give us a little sneak peek, just like give us something like a theme or something. Let's just say I'm gonna piss off some of my ex teammates. So I'm a, it's the T. It's the T. It's the T. That's what we want. We want the T. We like to get messy on Iron yes, Man. Yes, sir. I know the setting changed a little bit. We still like it. Mm -hmm. Um. So. We talked earlier about Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Dolphins have an opportunity to win the Super Bowl. What, 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 what scares me is post Thanksgiving, the weather conditions change. Mm. So your offense right now is unstoppable. Right. Your speed is your speed. Right. Right. But does that travel in the winter conditions? Oh yeah, man. Speed never changes. I, I mean, you know how it is. Um, the only thing that's gonna change is being able to catch the ball. In that cold, <laughs> your fingers are gonna be cold. But besides that, the speed gonna be speed, um, and I think we gonna become even more of a, even become even more of a better running team. You know, because when it's cold, nobody really wants to tackle. Right. So I, I can see Devon and Raheem, you know, having a put a pretty good, you know, weeks coming up soon. Right. All right, couple more. And I know you. I'm getting to know you. Come on now. Who's the best wide receiver in the NFL not named Cheetah or Waddle? Ah. Yes. You, you, you yes, must, you I, must yeah. knew I was going to say that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, Je Justin Jefferson, Devontae Adams, Mike Evans, Keenan Allen. Ke Hold on. Yeah, Keenan Allen. Let's see. Who was having a real good year? I'm, I'm just going off this year, by the way. Stephon Diggs. Diggs, yep. Diggs. Yeah, so those five guys. Yeah, who else is having a good year? Cooper right Cup. He 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 just, he just had. Got back. He just got Puka. back. He he looked real good. Puka Puka rookie, but he got to continue to show us. Mm-hmm. I, I don't really dive into the little early. When you 
When you retire, where are you going to be amongst the all-time wide receiver greats? Uh, you know what? I, I feel like that, that that's not for me to rank, man. I feel like um, that'll be for, like, the voters or whoever. Where would you like to be? Because I, we could, let's keep... Obviously, I want to be number one. I want to be number one. That's always my goal, to be the best at everything that I do. You know, but obviously, Jerry Rice is the goal of our position. I feel otherwise. I feel like A.B. is. I love Antonio Brown, by the way. Yeah. That's my guy. So, always all, always trying to trying to get that number one spot, man. But you're going to retire soon. We'll see, man. I don't believe it. You ain't retiring, bro. There ain't no way in hell. Man, like. There ain't like, no way in hell. Bro. Like I say, it's all about changing the game, man. Like, um, with, with football, like, you got certain coaches that want you to do certain things. And if I feel like if I'm not being brought back to Miami, I'm not finna go all the way to the East Coast or the West Coast and like get ran to death in practice. You feel me? Cause like I already know how to practice. I already know how to set the standard. So I'm, if I'm not being brought back to Miami with this team here, man, I'm. It's a wrap. It may be, it may be over with. Who knows? We'll see. We'll see. But look, that was the cheetah, Tyreek Hill. The names introduced themselves. Um, we unpacked success. We, we unpacked a little ball. Make sure y'all subscribe not only to our channel, but also Cheetah, Tyreek Hill's channel, Soul Runner, everything that he's doing over there. Um, this was a, a dope conversation, seeing him in a different light. Um, my brother, true blessing. Uh, thank you for this time. Thank you, my brother. Respect. They call me Big Jack. Lost my fucking brother and that shit had me a bit sad. And now I'm chasing big cash. Niggas used to rip tags. I couldn't even stay the whole year. We used to skip class. Now all I do is get back. I'm the one the family running to, whatever, get back. My city have a problem, first thing they tell you, get jacked. If you ain't around no more, it's fuck you with your bitch ass. I was around for little cash, turn to fucking big cash. I ain't never touched a fucking woman, never snatched a purse. I'm the one that put the cape on and take her back to church. Me and K West Chess and Daisy used to pack the work, holy flow, should probably have a choir when I rap a verse, seemed like everything was going backwards, had the rap reverse, niggas try and mention Jag name, but never asked me first, she done gave me easy access, she got that happy skirt, ironic how we got up out the trap from doing trappy work.